Welcome back to the show. Today we'll be making sweet little buttery milk buns. And as the name suggests, we'll be using an enriched dough containing milk, butter and sugar. So skip this one if you're on a diet. But if you'd like to know how to make these, keep watching. Because they are super easy to make and they don't take a lot of time at all. So let's start with the equipment that we'll be using. Although not totally essential, I would advise using a muffin tin. And besides that, we'll just need the regular bowl, scales, scraper, probe, a little brush to brush the butter on. Now on to the ingredients. You'll need strong white bread flour, milk, also milk powder, soft butter, sugar, salt, yeast, an egg, and some extra butter for brushing. Now I know my kitchen's around 20 degrees Celsius, so I want my milk to be just around the same temperature. So let's begin. Get your bowl, add your milk and your yeast. Let it hydrate just for a minute. After that, in with the sugar and the salt, the milk powder and also the egg. And I would suggest before you add the egg, just give it a quick whisk. And then add your softened butter as well. Normally I would advise adding the butter once the gluten has been developed, but we'll try it this way this time to make it easier. And once that's mixed up, add your last ingredient, the flour. And then grab a spatula or your dough scraper, or even use your hands. Just give it a good mix until you don't see any more dry flour. And then tip your dough out on your work surface and we'll start kneading it. As you can see, there's some lumps of butter in the dough. We want to work these in, so just use the normal kneading method. Press down and forwards with the heel of your right hand and with the fingers of your left hand, hold the piece of dough underneath the heel of your right hand and repeat. If it gets a bit sticky, just use your dough scraper to bring it all back together and then keep on working. It should not take more than 5-6 minutes or so. Now I have quite warm hands, so making a dough like this usually is quite sticky and messy for me. So using a dough mixer would be a lot easier. And if you have one, then you can place all of your ingredients in the mixing bowl and knead them with the dough hook for about 45 minutes on medium speed. I do have a KitchenAid at home, but I want to show people how to make this by hand. And it is quite easy. You just need to pop a can of elbow grease and have at it. So we've been kneading for a while now. You can see that the dough has become a little bit smoother, a little bit less sticky. And we're about ready to proof it. Now get your bowl, place your dough ball in it, and always take the temperature of your dough after you've finished kneading it. You want this to be around 25 degrees Celsius, if your kitchen is around 20 or 22. So we'll cover it and proof it for one hour. If your dough is warmer than 25 degrees Celsius, you want to shorten the proofing time to about 45 minutes. And if it's cooler, you can extend it for 15 minutes or so. And whilst the dough is proofing, you want to preheat your oven to 200 degrees Celsius with the fan off, or 180 with the fan on. So as you can see, the dough is puffed up nicely. Now we can divide it. So tip the dough piece out on the table and using scales, divide it into six equal parts. And you really want to use the scales here, don't eyeball it. Because otherwise you might end up with all kinds of wonky shapes. And we don't want that, we want them to be nice and even and they will also bake at the same time, they're all the same size. This dough is quite dry so I wouldn't suggest using any flour or dusting your table or anything like that. It should not stick anyway. So after you've weighed out your six dough pieces, you want to divide them into three smaller pieces each. This time we're not using scales because it's quite easy to eyeball it. Then you want to pre-shape them into little balls. So what you want to do is take a dough piece and fold the edges over the middle, going around in a circle until you reach the point where you started. And then rub them on the table just to tighten them and make sure the smooth side is pointing up. Don't worry if you mess it up because you still have 17 pieces to practice on. So once you have finished rolling out your dough balls, get your muffin tin and brush it with butter. If you have a non-stick muffin tin, you can skip this step. But we are making buttery milk buns, so you might as well go all in, right? So once everything's nicely buttered up, just take three balls and place them into each muffin hole. There's no special skills involved here, just place them in and leave them there. That's why these buns are so easy to make. You can kind of organize them and press them down a bit just to fill the hole. 
but don't press too hard, you don't want to push out any of the fermentation gases. So we're ready for the final proof. Cover your dough with some cling film so that it doesn't dry out and leave it to rise for around 45 minutes. They should gain about 30-40% volume I would say. But if they're not rising, just leave them for longer. But these look about right. So the final step before baking is brushing them with more butter. This will give them a really rich golden crust and a nice nutty roasted flavor. They will take around 15 to 20 minutes to fully bake. And once they're done baking, we will need to do one more last thing to make them extra rich and lovely. I'm sure you guessed it. Get some more butter on there, right? I mean, look at them. They just come to life. They're glistening and shining and, you know, there's never too much butter. Now after you've finished brushing them, I would suggest taking them out of the muffin tin and cooling them on a wire rack. If they stay in the tins, the bottoms might get a bit soggy. And those are the butter rolls. Easy, right? And as always, if you have any questions or suggestions, write them down in comments. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe because I post every Wednesday. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.